a little bit about uh, Northwestern. They got three double-figure scores, but uh, it looks like they got two guys that are seven and seven, and those guys might be the, like, kind of the most dangerous side of that. You know what you're going to get out of their double-figure guys, but. Well, if I listen to Doug Herner or De Dwayne Stevens, you know, this is one of the, maybe the third, fourth best team we've played. You know, the difference with Northwestern this year, if you look at them last year, they've got a lot of experience now. And those guys that have been through the wars, Law is a lot better. Lindsey might be the most improved kid in our league. McIntosh started since his freshman year. Uh, Lumpton, you know, has played. Those guys played a lot, like maybe a couple of my first teams, got their brains beat in. We're 13 and 0 last year, 13 and 1, and then they fell on hard times. And one of the reasons is, you know, they didn't play as good a schedule early. This year they played a great schedule early. And I just, we just think they're a much improved team, um, very well coached, run a lot of great stuff. And, uh, you know, the hardest thing is, I mean, let's face it, you you look at Northwestern, just like people used to look at Michigan State, you know, and it wasn't a fear factor on your schedule. And now for the fans and the players that have seen that, this is a different team. I mean, we've all said they're a tournament team. I don't want to put any pressure on him, but this is a very good basketball team. And I'm being honest. The addition of Law and giving them that sort of that lengthy 6-7 wing, that that is huge difference they didn't have last year on that roster. And he can shoot it, and uh, they got a backup point guard who's really playing well now. But Law is, a, you know, he was their biggest time recruit, and he was injured all last year. So, yeah, he's a, he's a much better player. Him and Lindsey are as good at the wing combo as we'll face. Uh, both can shoot it, both can put it on the floor, both athletic, um, very good players. Well, you you see mentioned after the Oakland game, that you weren't going to set a rotation. You were going to let guys earn it with how they played in the game. Is Alvin going to get a look at a starting chance? He will get a look. I said games and practice. Okay. Make sure you check your computer. Um, but, uh, you know, the other thing that, that uh, is sometimes hard, and, you know, even with Aaron right now, it's not like, uh, you know, McQuaid has not been beating down the bush, uh, to be honest with you. But I'm trying to look at some people might be better off the bench for themselves. Some people might be better off the bench for us. And like we need, like, like, like when we did it with Travis just a couple years ago, you know? Um, so that plays into the, the account too. If I looked at who's playing the best just right now, yeah, I'd probably start Elvin on the wing. But Elvin's in a pretty good position. He's playing pretty good. He's handling it well. And being a veteran that he is, He's the, the, almost the ultimate utility guy. You know, I played him probably 20 minutes at the four against one of the biggest teams in the league. So he can play different positions. I have different options with him. And, uh, but our starting lineup is not secure yet and maybe won't be all year. And as I did say, um, a lot of that's going to be determined by them. The parts that will be determined by us is what we feel is best coming off the bench, what we feel is best, who can handle starting a little better. I've been amazed by some of the guys that I thought would be dying to start. would rather come off the bench. There's a lot of behind the scenes things. Um, everybody's not wired the same. And my job is to make sure I <clears throat> figure out a way to put them in the most comfortable position they can be. Uh, if, if it was me, um, your ego, you know, your girlfriend, you want to start, you know. Uh, I'd want to play at the end of the game. Uh, that would be the most important time to me. So, but being human, um, you know, I think to a lot of guys starting is important. But as I said, there's a couple guys that would rather come off the bench. So, as starting is overrated from that standpoint, it's how much you play and how good you play. That's really the key. You mentioned about Minnesota the other night, learning about how to finish games in the last thing. Are you starting to see from your guys what they've learned maybe in those early games this year? You know, it's, it's funny how we all react, including me. Um, I definitely said that, and I definitely believed that. I said it in the huddle with four minutes left. I said we found ways to lose a couple games that I think we should have won. And, uh, you know, maybe we shouldn't have won this game the way we played early, but the way we played the second half, I thought we should. And let's find a way to do that. And that was the battle cry. And, but I don't look at one game as being the answer, but I do look at one game can sometimes get your guys to trust and believe, you know. I still say the hardest thing, and I spent some time on a phone with Calipari this morning, and 
try to figure out the hardest thing with freshmen is getting them to trust you, getting them to trust their teammates. It's and why should it be surprised? You know, um, that's why experience is sometimes the biggest key to all successful teams. So I, I do think we took a step. We practiced pretty good. Um, how we respond now in a game that I think we're going to have to play awfully well to win. I mean, if you watch them against Butler, if you watch them against Texas, they beat them by 20. If you watch them against uh, it was one of their other really big games. I mean, they play really, really good basketball, even in losses like Notre Dame. They lost by four. Yeah, two I mean, uh, they're, they're playing really well. Isn't trust one of the big things Ward in the other day from his teammates? They know they can throw it in there and something's going to happen. Yeah, no, I got to trust him that he can make a free throw. So <laughs> trust works for coaches and players. And I'm just kidding on that, but you're yeah. right. You are right. Um, what, what he's doing a better job of is he, we used to throw it into him and it kind of like, it's like a magician. It disappeared. You never saw the ball again. But now he's kicking the ball out. He's moving the ball better. Um, I think they're trusting to get it in, and he's trusting that if he gets it out, he'll get it back in. And he's trusting us, too. So it's a good deal all the way around. Do you believe in momentum from what that, from what you gained in the late going the other night? What I believe in more than anything now that has changed dramatically in my short career, but especially in the last five years, is confidence. You know, it's such a fragile thing with that damn Twitter. You know, and I, I'm, I'm so serious. I listen to all those football guys talk about it right now. And, um, it's amazing how confidence can rattle you. And, uh, you know, everybody thinks it's the coach on them too hard, not on them enough. Give them confidence, don't give them confidence. Let me tell you something. I occupy 5% of their day. That phone occupies 90% of their day. So it's not even funny anymore. It's ridiculous. And so I think kids are more fragile now. They read stuff, they, they're disappointed in themselves, they lose confidence, all those things. So, um, yeah, confidence is a big, important key right now, I think, to the new millennial, the softer human beings. Speaking of which, Miles looks like he's getting a little harder and getting some more effort in. What's kind of your, your take on him right now? Hang on a second. Hey, Mike! Mike! We can go upstairs and shoot free throws. That's great. We got more baskets. We can go upstairs and shoot free throws. Yeah. Um, um, I'm sorry, what was the question? Oh, Miles. How could I forget that question? <laughs> you know what? He's doing really well. Um, what does really well mean? You know, there's such a fine line in this whole thing, too. You know, we're calling, make sure we're calling specialists, guys that have been through it. Uh, Duke and different places now that have been through it. But every human body is different, you know. As I look around, I see a lot of different bodies here. And uh, some pretty impressive, <laughs> some pretty depressive. <laughs> but uh, no, all kidding aside, uh, it's, it's figuring out now. He's got to run more. He got it!